Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're going to be making this large Constantina box card. And the inspiration for this project came from Sam at Mixed Up Craft. And the coloring is from Sandy Allnup for her coloring techniques of the skin tones and the dreadlocks. I used the Bloom Girl Hope stamp set from Prima. I also used the Magnolia Lane Ribbon Combo Pack, the Good Morning Magnolia Stamp and Die Set from Stamping Up. Everything is from Stamping Up with the exception of the Bloom Girl Die. I used the Plain Circle Dies, the Large Letters, Although those are retired now, Stamping Up does have other letters in their catalog. The Tuft Textured Embossing Folder. For the cardstock, I used Thick Whisper White, Mossy Meadow, Early Espresso. and Petal Pink. The cardstock is Designer Series Paper from Stamping Up. And I'm just going to go through some of the sheets here to show you how stunning this paper is. It is double-sided and quite thick. A lot of the images can be cut out using the Magnolia dies with the bundle. The thing I like the most about stamping it up is that all the colors of the products coordinate with each other. You will need some wet glue. I also used the shimmer paint from the annual catalog. And all you need to do is add some rubbing alcohol to the spritzer and then only about three or four drops of the paint. Shake it up very well and spray it on your cardstock and it gives a really nice shimmer. As you look at the Early Espresso on some of the panels, you'll be able to see it a lot better. I have all four colors and I use them a lot. I use some of the Petal Pink embellishments not only those little hearts, but I also used a petal pink pearl for her hair. I used the Memories and More cardstock pack for those stickers there. And I also fussy cut some of the images out from the designer series paper. You will need a one inch hole punch. A scoring tool. A pick, a bone folder. And a pair of paper snips. All of the measurements for this card are over in my blog, which you'll be able to download and print off. Now for our card pieces, there is a piece of seven and a half by seven and a half whisper white cardstock. 
a piece of 7 and 7 sixteenths by 7 and 7 sixteenths piece of cardstock. And I'm going to show you in a little bit how you can cut that accurately. You will need four to five pieces of Whisper White cardstock. Now, this is for the Constantina folds, and they measure four inches by eight and a half. And depending on how many panels you want will depend on how many pieces you will need. You will also need one piece of 4 by 8 cardstock. Then you will need a piece of 4 and 3 eighths by 4 and 3 eighths, two of those. And then you will need two pieces of four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now I stamped this image again with the Bloom Girl Hope stamp set. And Sandy Allnup is, I consider, a genius in uh, coloring. She taught me how to do skin tones and even the dreadlocks. When you stamp this image out, there is none of those dreadlocks there. Go over to her uh, YouTube channel and take a look at what she does. Then you will also need 14 pieces of one and a quarter by four and a quarter inch pattern paper to decorate the sides of your box. You will need 10 pieces of 3 and 3 fourths by 3 and 3 fourths cardstock. And I used the Early Espresso for this. And I went ahead and um, did a lot of the decorating because that seems to be take uh, most of the time. The girl who I made this card for, her name is Brandon, so I die cut the letters out and put that on her, each of those panels. You will also need a piece of three and three fourths by three and three fourths for the back of the card. Now, as you take your four and a half inch square piece of thick Whisper White cardstock, you are going to score it on all four sides at one and a half inches. So, score it at one and a half, rotate it, score it, rotate it score it, and rotate it on all four sides. Then your 7 and 7 16th piece, you're going to cut the 7 and a half, 7 and a half down to the 7 and 7 16th. And as you can see here on this ruler, I show you where that mark is. It is just before the seven and one half inch mark after the seven and one fourth inch mark. It's that first little notch before the seven and a half. So you're going to trim that down to seven and seven. Sixteenths of an inch, and then place it in your scoreboard and score it at one and a half on all four sides using your scoring tool. Then you're going to take your eight and a half 
by four inch pieces of white cardstock and on the eight and a half inch side you're going to score it at four inches and then score it again at eight inches you're going to flip it over and score it again at four and eight this helps with the Constantina folds and as you can see I use those little sticky notes so that I can remember which piece of cardstock goes with um, which area of the card or the project I am making. So you're going to go through and score each one of those pieces whether you have four or five at the four inch and eight inch mark on both sides. Now as you score each one of those, when you're done, you're going to take a little wedge off of both sides of that little half inch mark. And as you can see, there's my score line there. And I'm going to take just a small wedge off of both sides. This will help when you go to assemble your Constantina folds. And then on the four inch by eight inch piece, which will be the last piece you will add to your box, you will score it on the one on the eight inch side at four inches. So flip it over on the eight inch length, you're going to score it right at four inches in the middle. And I think we're done with our scoreboard now. So now you're going to take your seven and a half piece by seven and a half piece which is scored at one and a half inches on all four sides. And you're going to take your paper snips and you're going to snip up or cut right up to the score line. So you're going to cut right on the score, right up to that score line. And then you're going to take small little wedges off of each one of those tabs. So just a smidgen of a wedge there and a smidgen of a wedge there. Again, this helps with folding the box top and the bottom. So a small little wedge there and a small little wedge there. right up to the score line. So then you're going to rotate your card stock around so that both of those flaps are at the top and you're going to cut the same way on the other side. Up to the score line and then the small wedges on all of them. Then you're going to fold and burnish your score lines. Now you can always do this prior to the cutting. I just didn't think of it at the time, but it doesn't really matter when you do it, but you should just have a nice fold and use your bone folder to make a real crisp crease there. So that will make the top of our box. And we're just going to set that aside. Then we're going to take our seven 
and seven sixteenths piece of cardstock and do exactly the same thing. Now, if you noticed, I put the little sticky note back on the top. That just helps keep me organized. We're going to fold and burnish the bottom of the box. Now we're going to take the panels that have that small little half inch um, score line at that one end, and you're just going to fold and burnish all of those. And I realized that I didn't need that last piece of cardstock, so I put it aside for another project. And then that's our four inch by eight inch piece, and we just scored it in the middle and folded it. And that will be applied to the back of the box. So now we're going to start assembling and gluing the box. So take your first piece of cardstock, the seven and a half by seven and a half, and then take the four and a quarter by four and a quarter mat, and you're going to glue that to the inside. You could do it after the box is assembled, but I find it's a little bit easier if you do it before you glue everything down. So just add some wet glue. And again, wet glue is wonderful because you just have a little bit of wiggle room as you're trying to center things. And just make sure you have a nice little border all the way around. Then you're going to take the bottom piece of the box and apply that other four and a quarter by four and a quarter piece of cardstock. Again, that's mossy metal, beautiful color, love it. It coordinates nicely with the designer series paper, as does the Early Espresso and the Petal Pink. I don't know if any of you know, but I'm a labor and delivery nurse, hence the short nails. Um, I need to keep them short for mommies and for babies. So now you're going to take your one and a fourth inch by four and a quarter inch panels and even though there in the video I show you four right there I end up only gluing down two at this point. I could have glued down four and probably should have because it would have helped when I go to notch uh, with my circle punch. So just apply a little bit of wet glue and then center it between those two score marks and the top and bottom so that you have a nice little border all along the edge and repeat it on the other side. Even the back um, pattern paper there, it's beautiful. 
those are small little magnolias there on that petal paint piece right there of the pattern paper. Now you'll take your one inch circle punch and what you're going to do is just notch out a little half circle and this will help the recipient open the box. So you're going to do it on both sides. I did not measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it. Just make sure you have equal amounts of um, on, all, on both sides. So now we're going to take our wet glue, apply it to that small little panel there, and glue it to the inside of the longer area of the box. Again, this wet glue gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So apply some and then make sure you have a nice 90 degree angle or corner there. Take some wet glue and do it on all four tabs. I have been a nurse for 43 years and absolutely love it. I probably have one more year to work and then I'll retire. It's been a fabulous career. The glue I use is called Art Glitter Glue, and it's not glittery, but it's just a nice glue because it goes on wet, or excuse me, it goes on white, so you can see where you're applying it, but then when it dries, it's clear. So that completes the top folding of our card. Now we're going to do the bottom, and I sped this part of the video up just to try to save a little bit of time on this um, YouTube video. Now see how nicely the top and bottom fit in together? That is that just little 7 16th of an inch makes that top and bottom just fit so nicely. Uh, they're snug, but not so snug that it's difficult to get them off and on. Now we're going to start with our Constantina folds. Sorry about that text message. It came across on my computer. I turned it off on my phone, but forgot to turn it off on my computer. So these are our panels that are three and three fourths by three and three fourths. And again, I went ahead and decorated them. Now what you're going to do is apply adhere them to the white cardstock and you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice border on all four sides and you want to make sure that your notches are in a good orientation so that when the recipient opens the card 
it will be um, visually easy for them to see without them flipping it over. Later in the video, you'll notice I get a little confused on opening it up, and we don't want that to happen with the recipient. So as you can see, that first piece of the panel, the four by eight and a half, that little half inch side is to the right because that very first panel there is going to fit inside the box. So we didn't need that little tab there. So we only need it on that right hand side on this first one. Now, because the early espresso cardstock is embossed, I put a little bit more glue than I normally would and uh, really pressed down there. Now, for the letters, I did also die cut some brown foam and applied it to the back of the letter just to help those letters raise up and give it some dimension. That tuft dynamic textured impressions folder, embossing folder is stunning. I've seen people add jewels to each one of those little diamond areas, and it's, it, it's just beautiful. Now, I do know that flower to the right, up there in the corner by the bee, it was cut from the Memories and More card pack. Now you're going to take your next piece of four by eight and a half. You're going to lay it over that tab so that your tab on the new pieces on the right hand side, you're going to add glue to the first piece and then just glue down the second piece right on top of it. You're going to want to leave the score line so that you can see it and it will fold easily. So glue it to a little to the right of that score line. Now this that I'm showing you here is called a Xyron adhesive eraser. It's two inches by two inches. I got it off of Amazon. And that is a crafter's dream. If you happen to get glue on a project that you didn't want there, you can just erase it off. And I notice on this uh, early espresso cardstock, it really does show up. So I had to use it several times on this project. So I'm sped up the video, just going to continue adding my panels here to spell out Brandon's name. You could use score tape like I showed you real quick there, but it doesn't give you that wiggle room because once it is laid down, it sticks and it's very difficult to get up. I do use it, but on different projects. Now you can see I glued that panel, the E panel first before adhering it to that little tab, but that's no problem. You can do it either way. Again, see that little bit of glue there? When that dries, I will use that eraser and just erase that off. Now I didn't adhere this in yet because I wanted to show you what it looked like on the back. 
with a little bit of that brown foam, again, that I die cut, and then just glued it to the top of that petal peak. And it just gives some nice dimension. I line up the panels so that my letters line up nicely. And you can see on that end, a little bit of the glue oozed out. But like I said, with this glue that I use, it doesn't uh, cause a problem once it's dried because it's clear and so you won't see it. I believe at the end of the video, I show you a picture of that end so you can see that it doesn't affect it. So don't panic over that. And again, I use quite a bit of glue here just because of the embossing on the back. And there's going to be multiple people signing this card. So I'm sure a lot of people will be playing with it, opening it and closing it. And I didn't want anything to fall off. The bow to the left was made out of that Magnolia Lane ribbon combo pack. It's like a little uh, linen uh, mossy metal and then um, a little beige colored uh, half inch ribbon. This is your last piece of the panel and that is the four inch by eight inch. And because it's going into the inside of the back of the box, you don't need a panel there. You see I'm erasing that and it's completely gone. These die cuts celebrate Amazing You were part of a celebration that Stampin' Up! had last year and I just absolutely love them. The Celebrate was die cut using this designer series paper. The little hearts were also die cut. And then I used some dimensionals to raise up that small little heart over the big one. Here I'm trying to decide how I want the orientation of that last panel. And I finally decide to have it the same way as that Celebrate one is. I also added some mini dimensionals to the word you so that they are raised up a little bit. See how nicely this folds up because you scored it on both sides. I love this color scheme also. So now we're going to take the top of the box and glue that first panel in there, making sure we have a nice border on all four sides. Now 
now again because I know a lot of people, uh, fellow nurses, co-workers are going to be manipulating this as they sign it. I add quite a bit of glue here because I didn't want it to fall apart. By the way, this is my very first YouTube video. I hope you'll subscribe and like my videos. So we'll just glue that last panel to the back of the box. See there in the background, I take a little zip of uh, my Diet Coke. <laughs> you can see it through the glass uh, mat there. So now we're going to decorate each of the sides of the box. Just applying wet glue. Leaving a nice white border all around each side. Now we're going to take that piece of mossy meadow and adhere it to the top of the box. And those are four by three eighths by four by three eighths. Here's where I get a little confused on the card.
I've been a demonstrator, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator since January of 2018. I remember my very first card I made. It was it was pretty sad. So I feel like I've come a long way. It's it's been uh, really fun learning something new for me. Because of the angle of my camera, sometimes it looks like I don't have an even border all around, but I do. Not that I always do, but <laughs> there I do. Well, this is where I get confused. <laughs> I, I soon figured out. I just wanted to make sure that I when I go to glue the top on that it's uh, the correct orientation. I really should be studying for a class I have tomorrow. It's called Stable. It's an education class for neonates. As soon as I'm done with this video, I'll, I'll study again. I think that finishes off the insides really nicely to have those panels there. You could leave them off if you want, but I really like how it gives a nice finished look. And it does cover up the little tabs where you glued the box together. Now I'm going to hole punch a little notch here in this cardstock. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit out of the camera view, but I just line it up to the inside so I can see where I need to punch out that little half inch circle. Just double checking to make sure the measurement is good there. And then I'm going to adhere it to that front little inside panel. If you haven't watched any of Sam's um, YouTube videos, her YouTube channel is called Mixed Up Craft. She's from the UK and she is absolutely brilliant in her tutorials 
the presentation and the things she makes. I love following her. So here I went ahead and applied foam adhesive to the back of this image that was colored with the help of Sandy Allnuck's tutorials. Again, check her out on YouTube. She's a master. Because if you saw this stamp, it's very plain, and I think it came out quite nice. There's a large area on the back of the box where my co-workers will be able to write their birthday greetings to Brandon. Now I realized here that this white piece of cardstock seemed a little bit too small for that back area. I felt like there was too much of the green showing the mossy meadow. So I end up taking a piece of petal pink that was in between the sizes of the mossy meadow and the whisper white and added it there. There's my completed project. And thank you for joining me. Goodbye.